Hello, I'm Andy Howell. Welcome to my uh, little office come uh, music uh, space. Um, this video is designed for those of you that are just getting involved in home recording, uh, perhaps recording guitar and vocals, perhaps just recording a guitar. Uh, and it aims to look at compression. Uh, compression is a great tool, um, but one that's difficult to understand. And a lot of people have said to me they've had problems using compression. So this is going to be a basic tutorial. Hopefully it'll be nothing too technical, but it will last for about half an hour or so. So grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, sit down. Uh, and if you can listen to this through decent headphones um, or uh, decent speakers, then please do, because you'll hear the effect that compression has the music. So before we dive into the, uh, to look at uh, how we manipulate this, Compression is basically just a clever volume control. What compression does, it lowers the volume at the loud bits, so it compresses the signal. And that used to be really important in the days of uh, uh, tape recording and in the days of AM radio, those of you who remember that, or uh, media wave if you're even old, where we had really poor bandwidth and we were often listening to our music uh, over really poor transistors. So these signals were compressed like mad, so that when you listened on a, a transistor radio, there were no peaks and distortion. Um, but actually, it wasn't a good signal. Uh, and then we had those compilation albums, which were like vinyl. You took the hits of the day. And if you compared the hits to the originals on an album, they were never the same. Again, because that was massively complex, because those things used to be played over really poor equipment. So if you're under 40, it's probably difficult to understand that because these days, uh, even using mobile recorders, digital recorders, we're often recording in 24-bit stereo and there's masses of headroom there. And that wasn't the case in the old days. So in the old days, compression was used on the way into a tape deck to make sure, make sure you didn't oversaturate. These days, it's used mainly as a post-production tool, certainly for those of us in home studio. Um, and it's a very useful tool. So you do hear people say, oh, compression is the enemy of the musician, uh, all the rest of it. Actually, no, it's a great tool to use. It can add a bit of oomph to your recording uh, and prominence to a vocal, maybe even uh, out an acoustic guitar line. Compression has a real role, but there is a problem with it, which we'll see now, which is when you open up a compressor for the first time, it really looks like something from outer space. Okay, so let's dive right in. In front of me uh, is a screen. This is my computer recording software, or DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. This is uh, Logic running on a Mac. This is a reasonably high-end system, but um, don't worry about that. Uh, all of these systems work in the same way, and the compressor functions um, are all the same no matter what system you use. So if you're just uh, starting out and you have a Mac system, you'll uh, find GarageBand or GarageBand bundled with it, and that's a junior version of this. Or if you're working on a PC, you may have downloaded Audacity or the uh, free version of Pro Tools. Uh, and that free version of Pro Tools is a very a functional piece of kit. So, here we have a, a, our song, and um, it's one of my own, and it's just three tracks. It's a guitar, vocal here, uh, and backing, and uh, I've uh, muted the backing track. Now I started, um, or rather I finished the last section by, by talking about the problem with compressors is that they look like something from outer space. So here is the compressor that came with this DAW. Now, that's quite astonishing, really. What I've got is a whole series of buttons and knobs and twisters. And up here at the top, uh, these buttons, ooh, everything changes. These are different emulations of different classic uh, compressors. Uh, and I've got knobs with names like threshold ratio, makeup, knee, attack, release. I've got input gain and output gain. It's really quite complicated. 
Um, and this is compounded by the fact that the presets that we have uh, available to us here, so we've got things like um, live vocal there, medium vocal, narration vocal, natural vocal. The problem with these things is, is that they obviously uh, affect these parameters, but if we don't know what the parameters do, then really we're a bit scuppered. You can't really just triddle the knobs uh, as to see if something works. In the way that you can do with, let's say, an EQ control, with an EQ control you've got um, you know, bass, mid, treble, which is reasonably sensible. You might even have a, a graphic display of that, and it's reasonably easy to play around and use the presets as a good start point. That doesn't work with compressors. Another way of looking at that is uh, to say, look, let's imagine I've got two separate ballads. I might sing them in a different style. Uh, one might have more attack than the other one. More, one might be more gentle. I might record them with different kind of guitar um, accompaniments. So one might have a, a gentle fingerstyle uh, accompaniment. The other one might have a more aggressive strumming pattern. I, I don't know, but the reality is each piece of music is different. And so the compressor has to be set for that piece of music. So uh, most people uh, who know more about this than I do will say, forget presets, let's set the compressor to your music. Now that sounds a bit complicated given what we have here. Um, but the good news is that it's, it's quite easy to understand what these separate functions do. So I'm going to close this window now. And I'm going to have a look at a more simple version of, uh, of a compressor for, for these purposes. So this is a compressor that came bundled with uh, my Focusrite uh, interface. It's uh, an emulation of an old British compressor. They call this the red compressor. So uh, there we go. Uh, it's it's a, a little bit uh, less intimidating. You've still got um, these things called ratio, threshold, uh, attack, release, and so on. Um, but for the moment, we'll start looking at this because uh, these are the key functions that we need to understand. So, where do we start? Well, the first thing I think we should do is to just listen to a little bit uh, of this song. Um, and I'll toggle the compression on and off uh, so that you can hear the difference, really. So. Let's just go to uh, here, somewhere like that. And uh, so we've got a guitar and we've got a vocal. So as the vocal kicks in, I shall just toggle the compressor on and off and, and uh, just listen to the effect. Back in 1920, give or take a year or two, Herbert stood one evening at the bus stop on the street upon the hill And he chatted to a young lass That he'd seen there once or twice He thought of all the charming He thought of all the nice And Bertha and Herbert Chatted all that summer through And after months of courting They knew what they would do And they plotted out their future In a damp and tiny room They were headed for Jerusalem Marching to a brighter tune. So you can hear the compressors having an effect. Um, and when the compressor's on, the signal is some, it sounds richer, fuller. And that's a reflection of what people call cutting through the mix. You'll see that term quite a bit. Um, but the other thing you might notice is that when the compressor is uh, not engaged, you actually get more attack at the first line of the vocal. So the compressor is not only uh, making the sound richer, but it's dealing with that uh, attack uh, at the beginning. And my voice is quite a strong voice and, and attacks a line quite a lot. Um, so a, a compressor working on the front of uh, a verse will make quite an impact on my voice. So let's just quickly listen to that again. Back in 1920, give or take a year or two Herbert stood one evening at the bus stop on the street upon the hill And he 
Jolly to a young lass that he'd seen there once or twice. He thought of all the charming, he thought of all the nice. And Bertha and Herbert chatted all that summer through. And after months of courting, they knew what they would do. So, what we've got there is the compressor kicking in. It's made the sound a little richer because it's uh, evening out the uh, volume a bit. It's compressing it. Uh, so it has the impact of bringing up the, 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 the quieter sounding bits. And it's dealing with that attack um, at, at the beginning of the sound again. So it, it's having quite an impact, even though the settings I'm using are quite modest. So let's now look at the compressor and let's try and see just what I was doing there. So the first thing uh, I notice when I'm looking at this compressor in front of me is that I've got two dials. I've got an input-output dial. Now, all that's doing really is monitoring the level, uh, the volume level, the signal coming in and the signal going out. Now, as a compressor is a volume control, whatever I do with this, even though it's a clever volume control, um, is having an impact on the, on the, the volume of the signal coming out. So what all this does, it allows us to match the input. We can look at what the input signal and the output signal is and, and balance the two together because quite often you will have to um, give a bit of extra oomph coming out uh, to make up for the compression. And if I just look here, I've got a thing called makeup gain. And that's dealing with the signal coming out and you'll see I've got it at 10 there. So I have boosted the signal a little bit. The second window here, uh, which is the most important, is a gain reduction. So the compressor is a clever volume control. And the first thing we have to look at is this threshold control here. Now what that does, that tells the computer at what volume to kick in the compression. So in other words, as the volume increases, the, the compressor sits there doing nothing. And when then it hits a certain threshold or certain volume, the compressor kicks in. So that's fine, you might say, but how on earth do I set this knob here? I mean, I've got it on 20 here. I could move it to 30, 40. How do I know what is the right level for that? Well, uh, I think a good bit of advice for compressing vocals is to start off trying to reduce the gain level by about between five and eight on this scale here. So uh, all compressors have these scales and so sometimes they're digital, sometimes they're a needle, but we want to reduce that compression by about five to eight. And as that compression uh, uh, begins to key in, key in, you can hear the difference. But let's just set that first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my threshold down to the lowest level here, which actually is, I think I said it was zero earlier, it's uh, uh, minus 10. And uh, as we play the vocal, I'm going to try and set this gain reduction for about the level I want. Back in 1920, Give or take a year or two Herbert stood one evening At the bus stop on the street upon the hill Now, you know, this is a rough and ready thing It's not an accu accuracy thing But I've got it at about where I want I think it's around about You know, it hovers around about an average of eight Let's just keep going for a bit And he chatted to a young lass That he'd seen there once or twice He thought of all the charming He thought of all the nice so, you know, uh, there was a peak there which went right up. Uh, um, I don't want to worry about the peaks. More or less, it's sitting kind of where I want it to sit. So that's my gain reduction. That's the first thing that I need to do. So what that's doing is saying to the computer, when the volume reaches this level, I want you to turn down the volume. So far, so good. The next thing we want to do is to turn down the ratio or to, to change the ratio. Now, if 
Fasholt is saying, this is the point at which I want to turn the volume down. What ratio does it says, okay, how much do you want to turn the volume down? So if you imagine you've got your hands on the volume switch at a certain level, you start turning it down. But do you turn it down a lot or you turn it down a little bit? And that's what ratio is. So if you look at the ratio thing here, you'll see there's a scale. Uh, at the moment, it's set to three to one. So uh, the lowest setting here is one uh, to five, 1.5 to one. Uh, and all it goes up to 10 to one and indeed infinity to one. Now this is a logarithmic scale, um, but basically the higher we go up this scale here, uh, the, greater the greater we're turning the volume down. For a vocal, you're probably looking at a reasonably modest uh, ratio of 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. And the only time I would use uh, anything higher than that uh, is if I've got a piece of music that is really badly recorded and I'm desperately trying to rescue it. But ju just, just for interest, let's just toggle between the low ratio and the high ratio uh, so that you can hear actually what's going on. Back in 1920, give or take a year or two, Herbert stood one evening at the bus stop on the street upon the hill And he chatted to a young lass That he'd seen there once or twice He thought of all the charming He thought of all the nice Now, what's happening there is when we're really whacking up the ratio So we're going to infinity to one um, You know, it might still sound okay But you're losing quite a lot of the dynamics of the sound Because you're compressing it so much So you're losing a bit of the air a bit of the attack that, that kicks in. So, um, you know, we've got a set uh, level somewhere, so I'm going to, let's see what three to one sounds like. And Bertha and Herbert chatted all that summer through. And after months of courting, they knew what they would do. So that sounds okay to me. So I'm using a bit of comp compression uh, and uh, at three to one. So uh, let's just toggle that in and out. The comp I'll switch the compressor on and off again so we can just check that through. And they plotted out their future in a damp and tiny room. They were headed for Jerusalem, marching to a brighter tune. So again, the compressor is adding that richness to it. It's a subtle effect, um, but uh, the ratio can have a big impact. So what we've done so far is we've set the threshold. So we've said to the computer, at this level, we want to, you to turn the volume down. And we've set it at about five to eight units on this scale, this VU scale here. And then we've said, okay, how much do we want to turn the volume down? Uh, a reasonably modest amount. So we're using uh, a ratio of three to one. Could be two to one, three to one. Um, as you start going above that, you start to crunch the signal out a little bit. So uh, that'll do for now. The next set of parameters we have to look at are these two at the bottom. So we've got attack and we've got release. Now attack is as you might imagine it to be. So that's how quickly the compressor kicks in when it switches on. So if you imagine uh, a drumstick hitting a snare drum, you're going to get a very fast attack, that percussive sound. If you use a really fast attack, that will capture the uh, drum sound. So if, you, if we go back and think about that, the days of really heavy compression uh, on poor radio signals or poor vinyl, um, there will have been a lot of compression on that because it will. you're trying to stop the signal distorting the transmitting stage or the playback stage. Um, you, the same thing might also be true of an acoustic guitar. You know, if you've got a, if you're playing a, a, a bare finger finger style, you won't need to worry about that too much. But if you're using a lot of electron attack, you know, uh, you might want to use a faster attack to capture that, or you might want to, you know really balance that out so you get as much of that attack as you want but it doesn't overpower the sound so attack is quite important 
uh, on uh, the screen now, attack is set kind of at a halfway point. So I'm just going to toggle back and let's uh, let's toggle between a really fast attack and a slow attack and let's listen to what difference we get there. Back in 1920, give or take a year or two, Herbert stood one evening at the bus stop on the street upon the hill, and he chatted to a young lass that he'd seen there once or twice. He thought of all the charming, he thought of all the nice, and Bertha and Herbert chatted all that summer through. And after months of courting, they knew what they would do. So you can hear quite a significant difference there. Um, when we're using a very fast attack, we're compressing more of the signal. Sounds a little bit dead. Um, so even though my voice has that strong attack to it, I don't want to take it all out. So I am going to settle probably about 50% um, level. So if I toggle between that and fast, you can hear the difference. So start with fast. And they plotted out their future in a damp and tiny room. They were headed for Jerusalem, marching to a brighter tune. Okay, so on balance, I'm going to set that for uh, halfway. So you see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm listening to the track. And I'm setting my various parameters according to what I'm hearing. I'm not worrying about what the presets say. I'm not looking too much at what the screen is doing. I, I'm actually listening to my sound. So release is next. Now that's uh, the kind of the opposite of uh, attack. So what release is saying is once the compressor kicks in, how quickly do we want to turn it off when the volume drops? Do we want to turn it off very quickly or do we want to... Uh, turn it off slowly so the compression lingers a little bit and this has quite a big impact on sound as well so let's just play our little uh, clip here and I'm going to toggle between uh, a really slow release a uh, really fast release time of uh, 0.1 and a really slow release time of 4 uh, so you get the feeling for that Back in 1920 Give or take a year or two Herbert stood one evening At the bus stop on the street upon the hill And he chatted to a young lass That he'd seen there once or twice He thought of all the charming He thought of all the nice Now there's quite a big difference there So uh, I think by and large The longer release time was just compressing the hell out of that um, But equally the fast release time is just pop, perhaps a bit harsh on the attack so I'm going to set that somewhere let's say let's say about one and a half uh, and let's just uh, toggle between uh, zero and one and a half and see what that sounds like and Bertha and Herbert chatted all that summer through and after months of courting they knew what they would do okay so um, we've uh, fixed our release time so it's a reasonably quick release um, but it, it but it doesn't compress the hell out of the rest of the signal so what I've done there is I've tuned the compressor to that vocal so I've fixed my threshold uh, by looking at that gain reduction of about five eight units there uh, I've then looked at the ratio and I've decided okay when we start turning down the volume I wanted to turn it down a reasonably modest level, so we've ended up at about 3 to 1. We've got uh, an attack that somewhere sits in the middle, so we're preserving a bit of the transients, but we're not letting them all go unprocessed. And then we've got uh, a kind of reasonably uh, quick release as well, because again, if you use a, a very long release, we're kind of um, compressing the signal. So. That's very simply our compressor. Threshold, that sets the level at which we turn the volume down. Ratio, that says, okay, when we start turning the volume down, how much do we turn it down? A lot or, uh, you know, a little. Um, attack is about how fast it kicks in to deal with those peaks at the beginning. And release is how quickly it drops out. 
Now, most compressors also have another function these days, which is this uh, button on the right, which is dry and wet. Um, and what this allows us to do really is to just mix in the original signal with the compressor. So at the moment, the compressor is set for 100% of the compression signal. But if I want, I can try and bring back um, a, a bit of the original signal. So, so imagine you've got two tracks and you're changing your slider up and down. So let's, uh, let's see what happens if we vary, we take down the, um, the compressor level a bit. Back in 1920, give or take a year or two, Herbert stood one evening at the bus stop on the street upon the hill, and he chatted to a young lass that he'd seen there once or twice. He thought of all the charming, he thought of all the nice, Bertha and Herbert chatted all that summer through And after months of courting, they knew what they would do So I've ended up there at about 75% And I hope you could hear, as we began to move from 100 down uh, Back down, we were introducing a little bit more of the dynamics uh, Of the original recording, a little bit more air, a little bit more space um, so it gives us a chance to fine-tune not just each individual function but the whole effect which can be really helpful. So there you go, we've tuned our compressor to the vocal of the song which is great. Now that's a vocal so uh, I'm going to just quickly look at compression on the guitar channel. So there is some compression on it. You will see a lot of people saying don't put compression on uh, acoustic guitar. Actually again it depends on your recording, it depends on uh, the style of music you play. Sometimes if I'm just recording a, 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 an acoustic guitar line and I listen to it, sometimes I think that's great. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of reverb on it to give it a bit, but sometimes I don't need to. Sometimes I will put a bit of compression on it, uh, but other times you don't need to. So again, you're tuning the impact to the song. So there is a compressor on my uh, guitar line here. Um, I'm just going to change it back to uh, this red compressor. So we're using the same kind of thing. So I'll bring that up. So the first thing I've got to do, if you remember, is I've got to fine tune the threshold. Um, and, I, and I'm going to maybe look for a lower level of a threshold uh, for the guitar than I did for the vocal. But, but you know, let's just, let's just go for around about three to five. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so I've got somewhere around three, five, my compression. Now I've got to set the ratio because I need to decide how much I'm going to, uh, the compressor, I'm, the signal I'm going to compress, or how much I'm going to turn the volume down. So um, I think the way to do that is to just listen again, and uh, we, we've got a low level, and we'll just toggle around a bit between low and high and see where we sit. I'm going to leave this at a reasonably modest two to one. Um, there was a bit of volume shake down there, so I'm just going to match my input and output. So if I just play it again, I'll mute the vocal. So we've just got the guitar. Uh, first of all, I'm going to look at the input signal. So it's around about 30 there. If I click to output, it's a bit lower, so I'm going to just hit that mic again a bit and you can hear it there. So if I go back to the guitar and we do that um, ratio check again between low and high, you can probably hear it more easily now because the output volume is balanced. Here we go.
So, you could hear there an effect on the guitar channel, a subtle effect. Um, I'm going to leave my attack where it was, which is in the halfway position, because I do want some of those transients in the attack. Uh, I'm not going to mess around with the release much. Um, so, but I've, so I've just added a touch of reverb to that uh, acoustic guitar channel. So, that is how I think the compressor works. So you've got your threshold, your ratio, and then fine tune with attack and release. Now this is a reasonably simple compressor. So what I want to do very quickly before we finish is to just look at that more complicated one again, and then we'll look at a simpler version. So let's have a look at the more complicated compressor first. Now this has threshold, it has ratio, it has uh, makeup gain, it has attack, it, it has release, but it also has this other function called knee. Now if you imagine when you're, when you're kicking in a, a compressor that you know, the graph looks like a diagonal straight line, you know, it kicks in diagonally. Um, what the knee does, it actually says, okay, we can alter the rate at which the compression kicks in. So it's fine tuning attack really. Uh, and it's called the knee because the graph will look like a knee. You know, you might have a, a, stro a diagonal line and then it might flatten out a bit. So um, that knee function, I won't look at it now. You can, if you've got one, you can play around with yourself, but it fine tunes the attack. But you'll notice on these other emulations here, there's no knee there on that vintage compressor. Uh, if I go to this one here, this vintage one, it brings it back again. So, you know, not all compressors have that knee function, or indeed, they don't all have these functions at all. So that's the more complicated compressor. The only other thing I'd want to mention about this, probably, is there's a limiter section over here. Now, you don't always get this with a compressor, but often you do, and sometimes you have a standalone limiter. A limiter is a bit like a compressor in the sense that you would set the thresholds, which at this point we want to start playing with the sound, but what a limiter does, it kicks out the sound above that level. It doesn't just reduce it, it kicks it out completely, or more or less. So that allows you to deal with um, you know, peaks in the signal when it's going into the red. Um, you can tame those a little bit. But for most of these purposes, you, you wouldn't be worried about that. But I mention it just because it's there, just in case anybody's bit worried about it. So that's our complicated compressor. Although it does look complicated, you're still doing the same thing. You've got a meter in front of you that allows you to meter um, your reduction. You've got the same scale. So I've, again, I'll be looking on my voice, somewhere about five to eight, something like that. Uh, you've got threshold to set the volume at which it kicks in, you've got the ratio to decide how much volume you want to reduce, you've got attack and you've got release. Sometimes you'll get uh, simpler versions of compressor. Now I've got two digital machine recording machines, portables, uh, made by Zoom. Uh, certainly one of them has got a compressor built in, but it's a much simplified system. It, it just has a kind of, you can, it goes from low, medium to high. And I've got a compressor here, which actually I used uh, on the original channel, um, which is a much more simpler event. So this has got three uh, variations on it. Each of them are diff different, um, and it's much simpler. Now, why would I use a simpler compressor? Well, this is an emulation of some tube gear. It's a really great uh, piece of uh, software has a really nice, warm, classy sound, I think. It's made by a company called Klangheim, uh, and they produce, uh, they're not free, these plugins, but they're almost free. So I think this is about, you know, something like 15 pounds or 15 US dollars, something like that. It's a really great piece of kit. So here, what I've got is I've got something called timing, which is, you know, something to do with uh, attack, I think, something like that. And I've just got one big compression knob, and, and what that does, it kind of somehow works. It's a, it's a combination of ratio and threshold, really. So obviously, the, the higher I turn that up, um, the uh, uh, 
the more compression in terms of threshold and ratio I'm getting. Um, I'm not worried about that too much with this plugin because it just sounds nice. So what I'm really looking to do is I've got I've still got my meter in front of me, so I can still you know look at what uh, the right kind of reduction that I want. But I'm really just turn, going to turn that big knob and listen to the quality of the sound. Um, if I look at the second emulation, uh, it's a l it's got a little bit more of the conventional stuff because there's a ratio button there. I can select two to one, four to one, eight to one, or something higher. Uh, and the third uh, simulation that that actually has the attack and the recovery things. It has a punch thing. I'm not quite sure what that does, but it does impact on the sound. And if I want a high ratio from a low ratio, you know, I just click that button there. So that's a much more simpler thing, um, but that's what's happening. You know, I still know uh, here, well, okay, if I go to that second simulation, uh, that's my ratio. You know, I can change the level of that from two to four. Uh, go on. Uh, or four to uh, eight or whatever. Um, so I know what that's doing because I understand what the compression is doing. In the first one, I don't quite have that. So um, this dial is you know, mixing the two. But this timing dial is really about the um, attack and release. And again, I can hear the difference there. So uh, I like these on acoustic guitar because they've got a really nice sound. Um, and uh, sometimes I use them on vocals as well, although I use a different preset for each. How do I choose? I choose by listening to them. So I hope that's helping. That's our uh, compressor. Uh, again, we're looking basically at these controls. Threshold, so we're setting our threshold, you know, somewhere around about 5 to 8, uh, reduction on that scale. We're setting our ratio, probably quite modestly, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, but we're listening to the differences, and we're then fine-tuning with attack and release. So that is basically what a compressor does. It's not that complicated, so now you know what the controls are doing, now you just have to use the controls uh, step by step like that and listen to the impact they're having. So um, before I finish, uh, a couple of things. Uh, there are a lot of great tutorials on the web now, uh, particularly on YouTube. By far the best, I think, for home recording uh, people is uh, the Recording Revolution YouTube channel by Graham Cochran. He's a great guy in the States. Uh, and uh, he has a whole series of tutorials which are free um, that uh, will take you through all the main functions uh, like EQ, like compression. Um, he has a whole series on compression. Uh, his first episode basically covers this and uh, the second and third ones go into a little bit more advanced techniques. Um, but he also has um, videos on, for example, uh, recording vocals, recording acoustic guitars, something like that. They're, they're well worth watching. They're really, really great. Um, uh, you can uh, you can buy some premium services for Graham. Uh, you know, he sets tax, tasks, he gives more detailed tutorials and so on. But I think you'll find that he's... His uh, free offerings on YouTube are, are superb. So Graham Cochran's Recording Revolution, I'll put it in the show notes below. They're exactly uh, um, uh, where you should go next, I think. Finally, at the beginning, I mentioned that I produced this for the acoustic soundboard or, or was prompted by the acoustic soundboard uh, um, chat board. Uh, this is the place to go in the UK or even if you're a wider field. Uh, it's it's a great place, a great community for those who play acoustic instrument, instruments and are interested in uh, acoustic uh, uh, tracks, singing, playing or so on, guitar, uh, bazooki, even the dreaded banjo is there. So uh, acoustic soundboard, a great place to go. It's a lovely bunch of people. Uh, they will help give you uh, some advice as to how to improve your material. Um, and they also have uh, actual real-life meetups in different parts of the country, and there's one annual gathering, gathering each year, uh, which is a, a great event. Uh, so Acoustic Soundboard, lovely people, a great place to share your music 
uh, talk about uh, gear, uh, talk about technique, talk about um, the music you like, the artists you like, and so on. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, that's my first guide uh, to compression. Uh, so don't just ignore it. Get stuck in there. And remember, you're setting your threshold and then you're setting your ratio. And that's basically, you, you do that. You set your threshold, you set your ratio. You're three quarters of the way there. Thanks for watching.